Hello! Welcome to What's Bubbling at Zin I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're pleased to announce that we've made some updates to Zim Transform and Zim Blob and the Transform Manager so they all work together. So excited! We also fixed a bit of a memory leak too, so the Transform's going to be working better for you for sure. So that's in 6.4.1. We'll probably patch the memory leak in 6.4.0 too. Anyway, let's take a look here at ZimZoo. So zimjs.com slash code slash zoo. And I'm just typing some stuff in here. So let's, let's make a blob. Var O is equal to a new blob. And we'll make this one orange, <laughs> hence the O. We'll dot center it on the stage. Uh, well, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's zoom in here for you. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and we'll view that. And there she be. So an orange blob is on the stage. Now, one of the changes we've made is when you click off, it hides the transforms, and when you click on, it shows the transforms. So, or the handles, the Bezier and stuff like that. So that's a bit of a change and that brings it in line to how Zim Transform works as well. So let's just uh, close that down and we can make another one. Var, how about a violet one? Is equal to a new blob and we'll make it violet and we'll dot center that on the stage too, I guess. Oops. I, I want to make it so when I go control S like that to save it actually just launch the, the view. So there we have two blobs now. Now that's kind of neat because when we have the controls on one and we go to click on the other, the controls come on the other because when we click off, they go away. So if I clicking off this one, uh, it goes away, but the other one comes up. All right, now I don't know if you noticed, but if we were to refresh that, they both start there and they both have their controls on. So that's not quite right. We could, of course, manually adjust that, but we can also add this to a Zim uh, Transform Manager, which would handle that for us. Uh, so we could do that. Let's pop on over here. Var. T for Transform Manager, I guess, is equal to a new Transform... I can do it. I can't do it. Manager. <laughs> a little bit of coding for three weeks. So I wasn't three weeks. It was three days. I mean, coding for three days solid on all this stuff. Uh, so our new Transform Manager. And uh, let's see. That's it semicolon and we then say t dot add so we're adding to the transform manager an array of things o and v semicolon and we hit view and now uh, neither of them have their their um, uh, shapes showing. Well, I might have wanted to show one shape um, showing automatically, but there you go. Uh, the other advantage that the Transform Manager has is that it can remember things. So t dot persist, and we give it an ID. How about um, noodle? <laughs> There we go. Not that I'm going to make a noodle or anything to do with that. So now we go and view it. And when we change some things, so let's transform these. Womp, womp. There, we made some noodles. <laughs> a couple, a couple of strange noodles. Maybe, maybe these. There, that's better. Better. Some, some noodles. Okay. And when we close that down and view it again, view it again, there's our noodles. Or indeed, if I just sit on this page and refresh, refresh. There's our noodles. Isn't that amazing? So even if we have n neither of them selected and we refresh, refresh, resend, neither are selected. So that's an advantage of the Transform Manager. Not only that, but we can add in um, other things that we're transforming. So how about var b is equal to a new rectangle. 
And we will make this 100 by 100, comma, and how about black <laughs> dot. Uh, we'll just add it to the stage, stage like so, and we'll uh, transform it dot transform. Uh. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, and then we need to add it here, comma, B. And let's have a view. So there we have a black thing uh, that is transformable. Whee! So we could set a backdrop for these guys. And we can make our noodles. Hello, noodles! Like so. Great, there's our noodle. And then we refresh the page here, refresh the page, resend, and there it is, all saved. Cool, huh? Isn't that neat? So that also works with pictures and other things like that. And let's uh, keep that transform thing on. We close it completely. We view this page again, as long as that is Noodle. And view, and there we go. Oh, can you tell I'm proud? I mean, this is so cool. Uh, hopefully. It's helpful. Not only that, but like I said, we fixed a memory leak. So really, all we've got going on now is one transform at a time pretty well. And uh, we're, you know, keeping 60 frames per second. No problem. Okay, so uh, if you want to clear your transform, by the way, it is t.clear persist. And you pass in the same ID there as well. And we view it, and, and there it is cleared. So we'd have to come back and comment that out so that we don't clear it again. And, and there it is, new. Okay, kind of like cookies and uh, local storage and that kind of stuff. All right, there's more things that have been updated as well in the documentation. Uh, and uh, You can read about that in the docs. And maybe we'll just quickly take you there. Zim docs and how about updates, I suppose. So a lot of updates for 6.4.1. And we've changed some of the names of those parameters as well. Double click is, is no longer needed. We as soon as we tried a single click to be able to edit these um, blobs and transforms, it was just so much more intuitive and way better that we got rid of double click completely. So that's now called toggle. And you can set toggle to false so that you can't toggle if you, if you so want. And there's other things in there as well. Um, there was a double click move or something like that, and that's been just changed to move. So a couple parameter changes in the blob and a couple parameter changes in the transform. We've also adjusted how we can record in the blob as well to match a record and set that was happening in the transform. So that when we run the transform manager, they can kind of do that together. We we added a get query string method. We've added a load timeout parameter to load assets. And we also made frame.asset have a broken image if there's no no file uh, loaded or proper properly loaded. So hey, do you want to see that? Let's uh, take a look. Let's see. Come back to ZimZoo. And that uh, frame dot load assets, and we imagine we call it b dot jpeg, which doesn't exist, I don't think anyway. B dot jpeg, and uh, it's good. And then frame dot on complete which will trigger anyway, uh, because it just does. We put a timeout in there as well. So if there's something too big, and it was it, previously the timeout was like eight seconds, and if it was longer than eight seconds, it would say it's complete, and then it wouldn't be there. And now you can increase that. There's a way to increase that in the load assets, I think, or maybe on the frame. I think it was in the load assets, just new. Uh, but for now, we're wanting to see what happens if there's nothing here. So frame dot asset round bracket b dot jpeg and 
uh, dot center on the stage. So previously this would cause an error, which wasn't the best, I don't think, but all, although it was good because it would show you you had the wrong URL for your asset. But if the server was down and uh, people were were out there in the world and, and they couldn't access the asset, then uh, an error isn't the best thing to have there. Uh, you could capture that with an error, but it's a pain in the neck to er like capture errors for every frame that load. You know, I never do. So this is the alternative, and you can turn it back again. So here we are, and uh, didn't seem to work. So F12 that ready from frame uh, 6.4.1. Oh, we're missing a stage.update. Yeah. Okay, stage.update here on a load. So remember when in, when something doesn't show up, do a stage.update. And then we'll do this again. And there she be. So this little icon shows up and uh, you can change that, so you can set that in the the frames parameters as to what your broken asset will or broken image will be. Uh, you can supply your own image or whatever, or you can set the property to null. Um, so after you make your frame, set the property to null, and it will go back to how it was before. Okay, so um, that, my friends, is what's been bubbling at Zim. <laughs> Some pretty amazing changes in 6.4.1. So uh, come on in, have a look, and try out the transform and the blob and see how it goes. Ciao!